colleagues. The most controversial part is exactly what Mr. Engel was talking about. Trades in leagues. I believe that the commissioner should be the only vote on the trades, and this is how I see it. If the commissioner doesn't do a good job, vote him out next year. Get somebody else to take it out. I think the league vote in the leagues I've been in is the most ineffective by far. And that's tough when you live in the United States of America. We were built on democracy. But I think democracy does not work in fantasy football because two things happen. If you actually get people to vote on these trades, they only vote on how it affects their team. They don't a vote based on the legitimacy of the trade. So why do it? I've played in CBS leagues for money where they just voted against every trade, the people. They left it up to the vote in every trade. You could trade a kicker for a kicker and it got voted down. That don't work. I think the commissioner call is the way to go. The third option, though, is no trades at all. I play in a lot of high-stakes leagues, and that's the way we do that. I think it's great for high-stakes leagues. I don't think it's great for 12 guys and their buddies. One of the greatest aspects of any fantasy sports, and some people's favorite part, is trades. So you can't take that away. So I want you to go to Twitter, at SiriusXMFantasy, and the question is, how do you handle trades in your league? One, league vote. Two, commissioner makes the call. Three, no trades, or D, other. And if you hit other, please put in an explanation there, and we can read it during the show. You can also pick up the phone, 888-963-2682, 888-963-2682. Scott, you've been around a long time. You're a Fantasy Hall of Famer. What is the best way to handle this situation? Just real quick, if I made that comment, I'd get in trouble. Which one? Scott, you've been around a long time. Uh-huh. You say it, it's no big deal. Me, <laughs> there's intention. No, because you say it a different way yeah. than he does. Okay. He's saying it respectfully. Is he? <laughs> yes, he yeah. is. I've been doing, I've been doing, been professional for a long, in this profession for a long time. That's respectful. So, you know, I don't know where he's coming from. Anyhow. Uh, I think it depends on the league. Now, I have this, this certain league. We're going into our 11th year. Some people were new to fantasy football in the league when uh, when it started. So I would approve all trades or, or reject all trades. But once we got five, six years in, everybody was experienced enough where I said, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not I'm not going to have any voting on any trades and I'm not going to approve it. All trades are going to go through. You guys are on your honor now. In the Greenwich Street Tavern League this week, this weekend, you said you were going to appoint Adam as the guy to approve all trades, which makes sense to me. I think that when people are playing for that much money and you're playing at two fifty dollars a head, you let all trades go through and nobody needs to improve it because, you know, I think these guys are on their own and they they, they want to do the best for their teams I, when they're playing that for that kind of money. So I think that's my opinion. But of course, I'll play it. In any sort of league that I'm dealt, you know that's my feeling on it. Yeah. I think it really depends on the type of league, but I I am against the vote like you yeah. because I feel like just like you, I've heard people say I'm going to vote down that trade because the team ahead of him in the standings is going to make it, and I, and I don't and I don't want to see it go through. I agree on Scott one point that there'll be no shenanigans, but. Uh... Just in case, this two hundred fifty dollars is a twelve hundred dollars first prize. You could have two people get together. So we just want to take that. Adam is not playing in the league for all the people out there listening. So Adam is actually an independent commissioner on these Which trade aspects. I do take donations for those that are in the league. <laughs> by the way, Adam, let me ask you: You play in a ton of leagues. What do you think is the best way to set up a league as far as trading goes? That's where the controversy seems to appear. We get calls every week. We'll get at least one or two calls about this. Can you believe this trade in my league happened? This guy, blah, 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 blah. and half the time the trades are okay. But the people get upset about them. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, the league I commission, we just put all the trades through. I completely agree with you. No voting. It is the worst because people do have selfish intent there. And I had someone in a baseball league where we used to have it tell me, yeah, I would just uh, veto every trade. So there are people like that. And then, of course, if you are battling someone near the top and that trade improves that team you're competing with, of course they're going to veto it because it doesn't appear. You can do it secretly and no one will know that it was you. So that system doesn't work. 
if you just put every trade through, it's a trust factor in the league. And I think especially if you had a group that's been around a long time. But, of course, there can always be controversy with uh, some money on the line. That's why the high-stakes leagues have no trades. But I do think you want to have trades. It just makes it more exciting. Uh, I think it creates more for the teams that are in it just another added asset to it, especially if the waiver wire is thin and you need to make a – an improvement to your roster trades make it fun and there's a lot of people who actually play fantasy just to trade i got a guy yeah. in my baseball league who's probably made honestly like and i'm not exaggerating i think he's made 50 trades this year uh, there's some people that just love to wheel and deal that's the exciting part for them so i think you do want to have trades part of the league especially one like this and i think for the most part in this you have owners that you can trust i don't think there'll be a collusion I would be surprised. I think there's a lot of pride attached to people's names in this and that everyone wants to win, so I doubt there would be much collusion. Yeah, I, I doubt it, too. You just have that money there, and you uh, you just got to make sure and be honest there. I agree with you. I think that there are people that play that don't even care about winning. They love the trade aspect, and that's all they do. From the day that draft is over, they're trying to make a trade. Like They'll tell you they had the best draft ever, but they're still trying to trade. And there are people, that's what they do in this thing. I don't think you have any chance of winning with that type of environment, and I don't think you care. I think that's the whole thing is your aspect of fantasy sports is to make trades, and uh, they like being the GM. And I don't think it's successful, but it's their right. Well, Fred Zinke won yeah. Town Wars last year by making a million he's trades. He's always done and that. And he's always, on top again. Yeah, he's, when he makes me an offer now, I said, I'm not going to trade with you. And he's like, why? And I said, I don't want to help you win. <laughs> you know what's crazy is I, I say that, that there's no chance. Fred Zinke's actually proving a lot of that wrong. Uh, but he is actually a guy that makes us more trades than anyone in expert. I made like five trades with him last year. I felt like I was part of his championship team. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, and he keeps winning. Yeah, look, it's working. He's got a formula, and anytime you find success, you stick with it. So uh, that's a skill set he has. You know, I we've talked about this, about how – you know, maybe some people are better at drafting. Others might be better at the waiver wire. Uh, some people might be better at setting their lineup each week. And then some that can trade. If you can take all of those and combine it into one, then, yeah, you're in really good shape. Uh, we got a couple feedback on Twitter, at SiriusXM Fantasy. Way to chime in on how you set up your leagues. First one, Chad Kidd says, we have three-member committee in a 12-team league. I'm going to be honest. This is how we originally set this up in our league. Uh, Adam was supposed to play in the league. Nando DeFino was supposed to play in the league. But we have uh, Monmouth Park. We have something going on that weekend. Uh, so they're going to be at that league on Saturday, and they won't be able to participate. So what we originally signed up, it was a three-member personnel. It was included myself, Vicaro, and Nando DeFino. Because I, I don't know anyone more honest than Nando. Do you? No. No. So I had to get him involved in it. And then... Uh, once Adam was out of the league, I felt like automatically he was the guy to go to. So we were going to handle this with a three-member committee. Uh, another one from uh, TL says, Kamish has to handle it. If league vote becomes very political, obviously unfair when fair trades were vetoed. And that's the same experience I get there. So chime in. Uh, you can call us at 888-963-2683. 888-963-2683. Uh, oh, yeah. Why did I get 823? Like, I've only I've been oh, here no. like six years, right? Six years. 